So I first uh, start by thanking the organizer for organizing this uh, beautiful conference. So uh, much uh, interdisciplinary interaction has been going on. Uh, and also thanks for giving me this opportunity to uh, speak here and give this talk. So this talk is about uh, uh, something which I have worked on uh, in, in this year and last year, on basically on boundary holography. Uh, I worked on M5 ring before, and the organizer told me I should uh, summarize something which I did before. But I found that uh, the time is not really sufficient. I would like to uh, talk about this. And then it turns out there's a very nice application of this idea of holography on boundary field theory, which uh, we can use to learn something about uh, M5 ring, and in particular about the wild anomaly of M5 ring. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Doesn't Maybe it just got stuck. Even here, it doesn't work. Now it's OK. So these are my collaborator, Rong Xin and Wu Zhong, uh, postdoc in uh, NCTS in Taiwan. And uh, these are the series of paper. Yeah, OK. Series of paper which uh, appeared uh, since last year. And today I would also talk about some uh, work to appear, uh, hopefully, this month. So uh, out of the talk, I will uh, first introduce the, uh, the phenomena about induced current. Uh, so the current is induced by some external, uh, external field, for example, turning on some magnetic field or turning on electric field, those kind of things can induce current. A famous phenomena is a quantum Hall effect, which ap appear when you have a material with boundary, and then you apply a uh, magnetic field, then there's some uh, hall potential developed. Uh, the current which I'm going to talk about today is similar, but different in a very essential sense. It's going to be a uh, vacuum effect. So um, it's fundamental property of the vacuum of boundary system. And uh, what, we, what we find is that we find some uh, new type of uh, phenomena of current in boundary system, like Kaiser-Mehr effect. And this can be understood in terms of uh, uh, anomaly of the theory. So in, some, in this way, uh, it has some universal properties. Uh, this current can be established both in uh, quantum field theory and also uh, using uh, boundary holography, so ADSB CFT. So in the second section, I'm going to uh, give you some uh, highlight about this uh, proposal of ADSB CFT and then how uh, the current can be deduced from, from this, uh, in this context. And then after this is clear, uh, this is, uh, we will do it in four dimension. We will generalize it to six dimension to the case of interest, say uh, uh, a uh, six dimensional conformable field theory uh, with, instead of magnetic, magnetic field, we will turn on a uh, free form thrust. So very much like Ori was talking about in the morning. Uh, and then I will show that this uh, induced, again, there will, we expect there will be wild anomaly, and this wild anomaly will induce some uh, current. And, uh, this relation is universal, but although in six dimension we don't really know uh, the origin of this wild anomaly, uh, but we know how to derive this uh, current from uh, ADS uh, BCFT. So we can use that to deduce the properties of the wild anomaly. So this would be one prediction uh, from, from, from this talk. And then I summarize. So let me just start with something uh, we have seen already many times. Uh, this is a uh, just M5 ring, we know M5 ring, so I'm not going to go, go through. There are different definitions in the literature, news, I talk about them, I highlight them already. Uh, the very important message we have so far is that although we have uh, definition, but we can, we, so far we have not had any successful uh, uh, deriv derivation from any of these definition, which convince us that these are, these are describing really the M5 ring. What I mean is that from property we know about M5 ring, uh, we can derive uh, those properties from this fundamental definition. Uh, even the consistency of this definition sometimes is also put into question. So it's, it's fair to say the, the system of multiple M5 brain is still uh, mysterious. Uh, oh, yeah, the fundamental theory, I put a wish list here. Uh, two two uh, Christian and um, Neil already talked about the wish list. So I just put up my wish list here. There's a lot of overlap, but these are the points which I, I think uh, we all agree uh, that it should describe the fundamental theory, should describe uh, interacting, interaction for the 2 comma 0 uh, super multiplet. Uh, it should contain a BPS state of self-dual strings. 
uh, which uh, can be seen from the open string, uh, come from the open membrane ending on the uh, M5 brain. And it should also explain the SDRT, this uh, uh, Tachikawa test uh, news uh, mentioned. And also there's a N2P behavior discovered using ADS-CFT. And it's not, uh, I mean, this N2P behavior is interesting, but it doesn't mean fundamentally that the degree of freedom in the theory is N, uh, proportional to N cube. It doesn't per se say this already, uh, because even for D3, D3, uh, some defaulting system, there's also some N cube behavior. But of course, we know the fundamental degree of freedom is N square, scale M square. So uh, what I, uh, for my motivation, I want to add some, some, some more item to this uh, wish list. Uh, so what I will show today is that we argue for the presence of a wild anomaly. So uh, no matter how the theory is defined, there's going to be a partition function. Uh, it may be come from path integral, or maybe from some other deconstruction, whatever. There will be path integral and, uh, not path integral, partition function. And if we scale the metric by a constant factor, then we can detect uh, the anomaly. This is called a wild anomaly. Uh, and uh, this is a prediction uh, for any uh, six dimension theory with a constant, uh, not necessarily constant, but for a, with a free form field, uh, flux background, there will be an anomaly like this. B is some coefficient. Uh, um, uh, and X doesn't have to be self due. In the case of self due, the answer is uh, different, but this is the general uh, case. This is one motivation. Second motivation is uh, I want to talk about this is not related to M fibering. Uh, it's just a boundary phenomena. Uh, so we know a lot of interesting physics come from, even if it's just for vacuum. Vacuum is a, a kind of uh, interesting, but also boring. Uh, but if you introduce boundary, then things become more interesting. For example, Kaiser may effect, you can think of it as a uh, energetic response of the vacuum to uh, mechanical change of the boundary condition. Uh, but there can be other, other things you can use to disturb the boundary system. For example, here I want to talk about a new uh, kind of uh, effect. So this is a this is the boundary, and above is a vacuum. So this can be a QED, for example, like QED system with a boundary here. And if I introduce a uniform B field uh, going into the, the board, then it turns out one can show that there's a current, and it's a normal a, a current in, uh, given by this, which is uh, inversely proportional to the distance from the boundary, and there's a coefficient C here. This uh, co coefficient is, turns out to be uh, uh, measured by the quantum Hall conductance. So it's uh, E squared C over H bar. So it's generically, uh, uh, intrinsically, not generically, gen intrinsically quantum. This is, uh, hi. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I said already, yeah. So this is for, gen for the generic situation for six dimensional CFT. Doesn't have to be two comma zero. But in the case of two comma zero, then there will be, we have to take, in, take into account of that, then the, it will be different. Yeah. Oh, okay. I see it. You're not an axiom. Huh? Yeah. You're not assuming it's supersymmetric. I mean, no, it's not necessarily uh, supersymmetric here. So I haven't imposed supersymmetry. Yeah. Okay. Or, We're assuming there's this um, uh, uh, Yeah. So this is uh, even more general. For any uh, six dimensional CFT image, this is not self dual. So uh, then we, uh, we, our prediction from uh, ADSB CFT will be this. I was, uh, it turns out there's a relation between anomaly and the current. Current we can derive from ADSB CFT. Anomaly have to be solved in terms of this uh, relation. So uh, yeah, we will, we will see that. Uh, so I'm talking about this uh, effect of the current. Uh, this current can be derived uh, from uh, the con quantum properties of the vacuum. So it turns out uh, we can derive it using, by relating this phenomena to the wild anomaly. Uh, the way, uh, sorry. Just what's, uh, the formula for J, uh -huh. what's the thing that we're crossing with B? What's that? Like? What's that? N. N? N, yeah. Oh, N is the normal. Oh. Oh, sorry. I, I think I, I spoke too fast. <laughs> yeah. Okay. N is the normal, sorry, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I should. Uh, okay. Uh, so this uh, result can be derived by either exact analysis of the BCFT. So this I will uh, uh, talk about in the first section of the talk, or from the ADS BCFT. So in the end, the picture there will be a picture like this. The in induced current uh, will be either for four dimension or its generalization generalization to six dimension. 
as a uh, connection with ADS BCFT. We can derive this uh, using ADS BCFT, or it can be derived from wild anomaly. So in front I mentioned, uh, this picture is complete. We understand all this uh, well, and also we understand the connection. In sixth dimension, we, we can derive the induced current from ADS BCFT. We expect there will be some wild anomaly, but we don't know. So we will use that to this uh, triangle to deduce the properties of wild anomaly. Uh, that's the idea. So, uh, okay, so first I will talk about this uh, induced current. Uh, to talk about induced current, is, uh, is, uh, would be nice since I talk about, uh, I, I mentioned about Kaiser effect. Let me go back to uh, general treatment of Kaiser effect. So, in, in, without uh, any boundary, we expect the one point function of energy momentum tensor to be zero, just because of uh, point grade symmetry. Uh, but in the presence of a boundary, then in general, we can expect to have uh, some asymptotic expansion like this. So x is the distance from the boundary, geodesic distance from the boundary, and there will be some coefficient uh, there. So there's a factorization, asymptotic uh, expansion like this. So this is something uh, which uh, in the 70s, in particular, Ken Dallas and uh, uh, collaborator, I think he's probably here, his advisor, I don't, I don't know, uh, Dish, uh, they did that. At that time, there were people in the GR community who were interested in uh, quantum field theory in curved space time. After they did curved space time, then talking about curved boundary is a nice way to extend their, uh, their, their, their formalism. So they, they, they considered expansion like this, and this is uh, the result. Uh, the, the way they derive this result is uh, really doing a hard calculation uh, from, uh, from the heat kernel expansion, uh, stringer, uh, propagator, that kind of thing. But actually, this uh, come e is much easier. We found that you can actually impose uh, energy uh, momentum conservation law and, uh, and dimensional analysis, and you can fix uh, this uh, geometric expansion up to some numerical coefficient. So basically, we Im if you impose uh, conservation law, then you ask what kind of uh, term can appear which satisfy the conservation law, and then these are the things. So actually, it's the, the, the boundary metric case the exterior curvature of the boundary, which is curved in general. Uh, the bar just means you take the traceless part of the exterior curvature, and, uh, and then you have, uh, you, have, yeah, you have this. So I don't spend time to explain this. I just, in the expansion, the, the basic passage is that it's a geometric, geometric expansion with a coefficient, uh, which are considering the physical data. So you, can, you see all, many, many expansions like this uh, in all over the place. For example, entangled entropy. As a similar expansion uh, for uh, factorization like this. Now, this coefficient uh, controls the behavior of the stress tensor near boundary. So, in principle, if you want to calculate the force, like, let's say, between conductor, you want to change, or for example, compute the pressure on a conductor uh, boundary, then you need this coefficient. So, let me call this coefficient Casimir coefficient. Uh, oh, sorry, too fast. Uh, Kaiser coefficient. This fixes the shape dependence of the Kaiser effect of the BCFT. Uh, if if this is uh, true for any uh, boundary QFT, if it's a CFT, then uh, conformal invariance require the leading term, the one which proportional to the metric, to be zero. It's just not compatible with uh, scaling symmetry, so it has to be zero. Um, anomaly. We know anomaly. It's just a refresher definition. Anomaly in general can be expressed in terms of a uh, indigo over the uh, stress uh, trace of the stress tensor. So sometimes it's also called the trace anomaly. Trace anomaly has two parts. Uh, there's a bulk part and the boundary part, which is located at lo localized at the boundary. Uh, the bulk part is, uh, is well, well classified. Uh, Swimmer and Dessa, they classified this uh, in, uh, in 94, I think, yeah. Uh, so in terms of uh, curvature invariant, uh, wild curvature invariant and Riemann curvature invariant, uh, the boundary part has also uh, been classified. Uh, so, for example, in three dimension, uh, this is the uh, which is scalar of the boundary metric, and this is uh, the K I mentioned before, the exterior curvature. In four dimension, this is the bulk part, and then you have the boundary part. Uh, the oil density itself is not a topological invariant. If you have a bound manifold with boundary, so we need also the boundary contribution to make a topological invariant. So, this is the boundary uh, anomaly. Uh, what, is, uh, what I want to highlight is that there are coefficients in front, again, in front of this uh, quantity. These are called the boundary central charge. Just as you have bulk central charge and you have boundary central charge. So the computation of this boundary central charge is uh, important because they, 
they fix a lot of properties of the theory. Uh, I say a lot of audience here uh, have mathematical background, so let me put a theorem here to make this uh, sound very rigorous. Yeah. It's, actually, it's rigorous. Yeah. We, I, I'm not going to give you the proof here, but it's in our paper. So uh, what, what I want to point out is that uh, the variation of the anomaly, uh, wild anomaly, and the arbitrary variation of the metric uh, has this, satisfied this relation. So uh, if you look at the boundary contribution of the uh, variation, and it's, then it's given by this integral, you take the trace, uh, take the stress tensor, integrate over the variation, and then you regulate uh, the manifold above the boundary, and then you extract the logarithmic divergent term. So this uh, can be easily, well, I don't say easily, but uh, it can be established half by half a page uh, of calculation, and it can be established. Uh, notice uh, the T appear here is the uh, renormalized uh, stress tensor. So, um, so this relation is uh, quite useful because the left-hand side is an exact variation. The right-hand side is not. It's just an integral. So it's some kind of integrability condition. That's the reason why we can, uh, we can get a lot of mileage from this uh, relation. Um, the corollary, uh, so uh, we can use that to determine th those are Kaiser coefficient in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the expansion of the stress sensor via the boundary. For example, uh, I say universal here because this Kaiser coefficient turns out to be determined completely in terms of the boundary central charge. So basically, this relation, this relation the left hand side contains the uh, boundary central charge because these are boundary anomaly. The right hand side, in terms of the T, contains all the Kaiser coefficient. So this relation allows one to fix all the Kaiser coefficient in terms of the boundary central charge. So in that sense, it's universal. The relation is universal. So uh, just an example, uh, for three dimension, uh, the, the anomaly has no uh, bug contribution, only a boundary contribution. So it's like this. So the variation, uh, the first time this R is already a topological term. I mean, it's a, like the Euler density for two dimension. So you don't have any variation from this, you only have variation from that. So B2 times a, a term like this, H and H prime, uh, K is H by H, uh, derivative of H. Um, the right-hand side, we substitute the uh, stress tensor, and then uh, we integrate. Then you compare the two, then you find this relation. So all the uh, Kaiser-Mayer coefficient, which are written in terms of uh, the Greek letter, are determined in terms of the boundary central charge, which are the English uh, sm uh, small letters. And a similar analysis can be done for four dimensions. So um, uh, I said already, yeah, it's quite remarkable that the Kaiser-Mayer coefficient can be determined in terms of the boundary central charge, and the relations are completely uh, universal. It doesn't, doesn't depend on the boundary condition. So the boundary condition will enter, it will enter, for example, to, to, to the value of the boundary central charge. If you use different boundary condition, then you, have, you get different boundary central charge. But the relation is uh, independent of boundary condition. So uh, that's just a warm-up. Uh, now I want to go to the current now. What kind of uh, uh, anomaly-induced current phenomena people have, uh, have known? So uh, let me give an example here. There are two famous, uh, quite famous uh, examples of anomaly-induced transport phenomena in, in, the, uh, in nature. Uh, one is called the CME, chiral magnetic effect. So uh, in the presence of a chiral anomaly, the standard uh, gamma-5 uh, uh, anomaly, uh, um, the standard magnetic field we will switch, we induce a vector current and an axial current uh, with a coefficient determined in this way, where mu is the uh, chemical potential. So this is the axial, uh, the left, this is like the left minus right, and this is the left plus right com uh, combination of the chemical potential. Uh, this has, of course, has a, a lot of application in, in physics, uh, in plasma physics, in uh, cosmology, and in particle physics. Et cetera, et cetera. And there's a related phenomena called the CVE, rotic, chiral rotical effect. So if you really just stir your coffee, if the coffee has chiral anomaly, then it also induces a current uh, in the <laughs> direction, direction of your stirring. Yeah. So watch out your mouth. Uh, you may get, get some, uh, some shock on the current. So again, there's some coefficient. Yeah. So these are determined by chiral anomaly. There's a T squared term, which is a uh, Carl Nenstein, uh, they, they did that. It is from the gravitational uh, contribution to the chiral anomaly. Uh, okay, so all these are well known. So when I uh, 
when I was uh, looking at, uh, I heard about this uh, in a few years back uh, from from Carl. But that time I didn't pay much attention to what 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 can I do with them. It's nice, but what can I do with them? Then I thought about this uh, more carefully. All this actually happen, happen in a material system. You need a chemical potential. You need some finite density charge carrier in the in the uh, in the in the uh, vacuum, uh, in the material. So sub, is there something similar to Kaiser effect? That's the motivation we have. Similar to Kaiser effect, which is uh, something happened in vacuum, for example. Uh, but it's, uh, it's a phenomena for transport. So can anomaly, in other words, can anomaly induce a current transport in a vacuum? That's the question we ask. So like asking for a transport response of a vacuum, in addition to mechanical response of a vacuum, in the case of Kaiser effect. So we found that. So the analysis is simple, similar, sorry, not simple, similar to the case of stress tensor. So, uh, yeah. Yes. No, yeah. Um, often I worry about the cancelling model. Yeah. And I think you're a little bit worried about that uh, cancelling model. Mm -hmm. And here you're saying, don't cancel the anomaly. Yeah. It's a physical these are, the these are not case anomalies. They're global anomalies so far. They're global. Yeah. 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 Okay. 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 Uh, uh, yeah, thank you. I should mention. Yeah. So uh, the current is similar to the stress sensor. It's just a, instead of two form, you have a one form. No, no, uh, second rank tensor, you have a first uh, one form, and it's conserved also. So using the conservation law, we can simul do the same trick. We can determine uh, what are the, cons the terms which are consistent with the conservation law. So these are the terms. So there will be some F, the background, F, and uh, for example, this K, these are the curvature of the, of the uh, boundary. So these are cons consistent with symmetry. Doesn't mean they exist. Whether the coefficient is zero or not is, uh, Depending on the on the uh, on the physical uh, mechanism on the system, so uh, so the current is con uh, is connected with uh, anomaly again. There's a general relation which one can derive uh, from the uh, partition function of the system. Any any partition function which contain uh, external potential, then you can do that. Then using that, then we can uh, we can determine again. So uh, this uh, J. Has a substitute asymptotic expansion, uh, and the anomaly we know. Uh, in addition to metric contribution, now we want to pick, make a variation of the a of the background uh, potential. So there, there's also a uh, f squared contribution. So these are the contribution uh, in the 70s. Uh, phenomenal, phenomenology people like John Ellis and Collins, uh, they they have done this. So b is the beta function. Uh, so this piece will will now enter in this uh, variation here. Uh, Doing the math, then you, you quickly find out that only the first term, this alpha one, can be there. All these are, all these are zero, and alpha one is proportional to the beta function. So, uh, so the, uh, there's a induced current even in QED. Then, uh, so this is the prediction in the presence of a uh, uh, of a B field. Then, after I put back the unit, then this is the uh, the current in QED, and B uh, one is the beta function. Yeah. Yeah. There's no classical limit. So just like quantum Hall effect, for example, this is precisely the same unit uh, happen in uh, uh, in the uh, yeah. So you may ask, actually, yeah, it seems puzzling. Yeah, what's the physical picture? I mean, you derive all this. It seems fine, but is there simple physical understanding? I mean, we are physicists, after all. Uh, at least some, uh, most of uh, some of us are, yeah. But we are interested in physical phenomena. So uh, that's a, actually, there's a very simple understanding of this. So you go back to ask yourself what happened to a vacuum in the presence of a background uh, B field. In a vacuum, you always have a vac vacuum pair creation. In the presence of B field, this vacuum pair, this uh, positron and electron, they created, they go on a circle, they combine, so in a virtual amount of time, they combine, so in the end, it's just uh, some polarization. Uh, uh, for the, for the vacuum, it doesn't really do anything. But in the presence of a boundary, then they are separation. So for example, this charge here, this charge here, then they get, uh, they are supposed to combine here, but the boundary stop them. So there's a less separation of charge. So this separation of charge is the essence of a transport, of a transport of phenomena, of current. That's, a, that's one way, I mean, I, I'm not saying you can use this picture to compute, uh, but this is the physical uh, picture. 
yeah, that's a uh, equivalent picture, which is actually uh, very interesting also, yeah. So you turn on the beef, yeah, yeah. So, so the boundary of the conductor, so the individual is boundary is that I, I didn't say what kind of boundary condition here. Actually, the phenomena yeah, was independent of boundary condition. But no, no matter what the boundary condition is, there will be some... When you say a boundary, yeah. you mean what do I really do? I mean, yeah, so, it's, so you can take a conductor boundary, for example. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, you keep, uh, but I mean the conductor, but how the, uh, you can take a conductor or dielectric and it's all, all the same here. All the same. So that's, that's, that seems very confusing because it surely has to know what's happening in the boundary or else I could just have nothing. Yeah. So as long as uh, you, you have, uh, you can stop this charge, then it's okay. So a, a equivalent way to see this phenomena is uh, in terms of a magnetic uh, dipole. So uh, the, the charge are created and they, because of the uh, Lorentz force, they move on a circle. The positive charge will move like this. The negative charge will move like that. And that is two current, tiny current loop. Uh, but the current loop actually contributes to the same magnetic dipole. They are both pointing, pointing in this direction. So this is uh, just saying the material try to uh, create a magnetization opposite to the B field, right? But in the presence of a boundary, then not like this, again. Uh, so, okay, before I do that, uh, normally this uh, create a uh, whole bunch of uh, dipole, and you have to renormalize, renormalize it away, so there's no physical effect. These are uniform. But if, with a boundary, then these are not, no longer uniform, because the, the, the loop created close to the boundary, they will be, again be cut, so there will be a deficit of the, if you do the renormalization, you subtract that, there will be a deficit. So in the end, there will, there will be a long uniform uh, magnetization density created for this uh, vacuum. And, uh, and the current arises in this way, from the curl of F. It's a magnetization current. Ah. Yeah, they should disappear, yeah. So we imagine here also they, there's a virtual pair, the image virtual pair, then they and hide they here instead. Yeah, when they hit here, then the other virtual pair process uh, just so they induce uh, this should also has a mirror image effect, inducing something in the uh, in the conductor. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's take the conductor there, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, the buck, you mean, you mean here? This is vacuum, this is vacuum here. Huh? There's, there's really no, no, no uh, mobile charge carrier. So these are, in, in, these are virtual, all these processes are virtual. There's no, uh, there's fuel in the buck, yes. The magnetic fuel in the in the vacuum, yeah. Uh, you mean these charges? These are just uh, the virtual pair, vacuum uh, virtual pair. The, I, vacuum by definition has no free charge carrier for me. Uh, okay. So uh, these are the physical picture, and then uh, the derivation uh, was, uh, was independent. When I say independent, I mean the relation itself. Of course, the bound, as I said, the boundary charge could depend on the boundary condition. Yeah. The computation of the boundary charge between the boundary condition. So now uh, let me come to the second part, which is about the ADS uh, B BCFT. So uh, we, have, we have learned for more than 20 years, how to do ADS, BS, uh, ADS CFT. We just have a, uh, sorry, yeah. I'm obsessed by this boundary. Yeah. Could, could I have that boundary to be charged? Uh, just stick, stick a whole line of positive charge. Right? Yeah, I think you. And then, you're, and then when you get your virtual pair, mm -hmm. the positive ones will be repelled and the negative ones will let go. I think so, I think so, yeah. If I did that, would I not get some dynamics? Because it would be like the whole 
Uh, uh, okay. So maybe then you can model this uh, in this uh, BCFT picture with yeah. some some kind of. Uh, no, no, the relation itself doesn't depend on boundary condition, but the oh, co okay. coefficient itself uh, depends on boundary condition. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So, for example, to do what you did, I have to do the QED, but with this additional degree of freedom at the boundary and then compute the beta function, then it, right. could, it could be different. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, we know how to do ADS uh, CFT. Now, for, uh, for CFT now with a boundary, so define an M with a boundary, uh, Tanakayaki in 2011 has an idea that. The duo is just a, so the gravity duo is uh, given by, by bullet like this, bullet head, uh, bounded by uh, a surface Q. So the region N, the, the gravitational, gravitational physics inside N uh, is dual to the uh, BCFT, uh, defined M. And so uh, the whole crux of the problem is then how to define uh, this uh, surface Q. Because when you, once you know the surface Q, then you can just write down the standard, uh, I mean, you do a little bit change, but basically this is standard uh, Einstein, uh, Hilbert Einstein term with a, graph, uh, with a cosmological constant. And then because N has boundary, so we introduce some Hilbert Hawking's boundary term. So this is uh, what people have done before, and now you, because you have the surface Q, so you have a new Hilbert Hawking's boundary term. And then uh, you have this uh, term P here also, because uh, P is the junction, so-called junction in the gravitational uh, literature. It's a junction between this, uh, this intersection between this surface M and the surface Q. And this is the place where the normal is not continuous. So it's a jump in the normal. So in order to have a well-defined variational principle, taking into account of that, you have to have a jump in the angle. This theta is basically the angle uh, jump uh, between the two normal. Uh, so then this is defined, well-defined uh, variational uh, principle. And this is proposed to be, this would be the, uh, the gravitational uh, dual to the BCFT. Uh, notice uh, Tadashi also introduced a, a constant T term here. So this is like a uh, like a cosmological constant term on Q, or you can say this is like a mass term for Q. But this is no matter what, this is just a uh, like a parameter, like a flush parameter you can introduce to the problem to make it uh, more interesting. And then one can ask what's the T correspond to in BCFT. Then uh, Tadashi found that the T actually is related to the G function. So in holography, you can also do this uh, RG flow, and then you find the G function, and it's a function of T. So the G, the T actually measure the bound, in some sense, measure the boundary degree of freedom of the, uh, of the BCFT for the G function. Um, the problem of this proposal is that if you, uh, you need to determine the, uh, the, the shape of Q, and then Padashi proposed to, uh, to do a variation of Q, let the Q change, and then you impose a uh, directly boundary, con uh, Lyman boundary condition on Q, then you get a, this equation of motion for Q. So basically, this uh, exterior curvature of Q satisfies this equation. So after we solve this, then we should uh, know the position of Q. But the problem is that uh, the Q is, actually Q is a co-dimension one embedding. Uh, so we only have one, uh, function to determine, just a single embedding function. But this is a set of equations which are many independent components in general. So this is not consistent in general. Uh, so that's we did it for, for boundary, which is a, like a flat boundary, just a, a straight line or a circle. Uh, so all the equation reduce to one equation. So in that case, it's consistent. But in general, it's not consistent. So uh, we come to this problem and then we propose a different uh, a set of boundary condition, a mix, something like a mixed mix boundary condition, and then uh, this is our equation. This is like a minimal surface equation. If k is equal to zero, then it's a minimal surface equation. Now this equation say k is a constant. This is a dimension of space time. So uh, I, I forgot, it's like a constant curvature, curvature, constant curvature equation, I think. Constant curvature surface. It's our minimal surface. Uh, this equation is quite natural because uh, as I said, uh, the embedding is uh, defined by co-dimension one function, so you only need one equation. So this is the standard equation you will use if in the case of a co-dimension one uh, brain embedding. Um, uh, this cons we have shown that this uh, proposal is consistent, uh, computing different things, and it's consistent. And it contains the original uh, proposal of uh, Tanakayaki. 
because it's just uh, the trace of his equation. So this contains uh, his uh, proposal in the special case. Uh, one thing which is uh, just a remark here, has to be careful when applying this uh, proposal, is that uh, usually for the people who do ADS-CFT, we do FG expansion, so-called FG expansion, which means we consider asymptotic ADS-CF, uh, ADS uh, space, where G is, has an uh, expansion, about, uh, C equal to zero is the boundary man manifold, uh, the boundary space time. So we assume the space time, the ADS space time, asymptotic ADS space time as an expansion like this. This is called the FG expansion. Einstein equation then uh, tells you that, uh, the, for example, this order of the solution is determined in terms of uh, the zero order data, the boundary metric, and the boundary uh, uh, Einstein curvature. Yeah. So this is the FG expansion. Here is you cannot do that because uh, the manifold actually, this uh, manifold actually is not smooth. In particular, we said already there's a jump, there's a discontinuity at this uh, junction here. So the main problem then is uh, how, to, how to do things without expansion, without FG expansion. FG expansion is useful because in, in principle, if you want to solve this, uh, can get a background for Einstein, uh, by solving Einstein equation, it's uh, almost impossible. You need to, but if you have an expansion like this, then we can solve it close enough to the, uh, to the uh, four-dimensional field theory, and that's usually enough if we want to compute something for the four-dimension. Uh, four uh, so, but we, in this case, we need uh, exact control of uh, the metric around the small c. This is much harder. So uh, we found a way to do that. We, the idea is that we need some expansion parameter, which is not z, but we need complete control of z, so we need to invent a new parameter. So the parameter is there, actually. If you look at the, uh, this is the boundary uh, field theory, the x is the distance from the boundary, so there's a expansion of the metric, which is called the Gauss normal uh, expansion. So we take a Gauss normal coordinate. When x is zero, all these terms drop, and then you just go back to the standard uh, boundary metric. But then you go in, then you, you start to see the curvature of your boundary surface, then it's controlled by first derivative of the boundary metric, q is the second derivative, et cetera, et cetera. So we can take a uh, construct a solution in, in the expansion of small k and small, small q, like this. So, uh, so in the end, we, we, we find a, uh, a non-FG expanded expansion. That means we keep the x and the c dependence exact, but we, we keep the, for example, the boundary curvature to be small and do it. And, uh, so using that, then we can, um, we can solve the Einstein equation. For example, this uh, f here, the, this function here can be solved, and then uh, it's given by some something like this, depending on dimension. Um, ah, oh, s is uh, s is supposed to be uh, so c and x turns out to be to come in this uh, same single variable function, single variable variable uh, combination. Oh. It's, yeah, instead of c and x uh, separate, so it just come in this combination. So uh, it has a single variable. This it's a Instead of uh, PDE, we have ODE, Einstein equation, so we can solve it. And uh, this is S, yeah. Uh, so S would be Z over X, yeah. So uh, there's a parameter here. Uh, if we put lambda equal to zero, then actually we go back to the FG, standard FG, but if, uh, otherwise you have a more general uh, background. So now we can, we are ready, we can use that to uh, look at the current. Uh, the boundary, you turn on a background gauge view, so it, in the bulk, we, we extend it, and then we have a, uh, for example, this is five dimension. So we have a five dimensional Maxwell term here. So we have to, the idea is very simple. We just solve uh, the Maxwell equation in this uh, back, uh, space time, boundary with boundary, and then, uh, and then look at the response of the action, uh, effective action with, with respect to boundary variation of A, that's a current. So standard ads -CFT when we find this. So, I, I didn't put the unit here. If you put that the Newton constant and unit, and then that's, there will be coefficient in front. So uh, this is the, uh, exactly what we found in field theory. How much time? Uh, oh, how much time? I have 10 minutes, something. Yeah, yeah. so OK. So now uh, I want to uh, look at this. Uh, now I want, everything I said can be generalized. Many, many things, not everything. Many things can be generalized to six dimension. So in six dimension, instead of uh, looking at particle, we look at strings. That's a natural uh, object. So for particle, uh, the particle motion induces a current 
and the current coupled to uh, gauge field, so standard. For string, uh, you have uh, the well sheet, so you have a, a, a two-form current, the two-form current coupled to the B field, and that's the standard uh, uh, minimal coupling of the well sheet to the B field. So these are standard. So the question I want to ask is, uh, are there any, any implication of knowing this uh, coupling? So we know, we know already, knowing this coupling, this JA coupling, allow us to uh, connect, make a connection with the wire anomaly. And here it's the same, yeah. So, no, uh, okay. So before I, I, I come to this relation, which is the coupling and the anomaly, let me just say a, just one more background about an, uh, an wire anomaly. Of course, wire anomaly is well known. Uh, uh, this, actually, this remark should appear earlier. So this is the metric contribution to the uh, wire anomaly. Uh, but the, if the background gauge field contribution to wild anomaly is not, uh, not known, only in four dimensions we know it's F squared. In six dimensions, for example, we don't know. Because, for example, already mentioned this morning already, how do we couple, for example, uh, B mu nu to the tensor multiplet? So here's uh, some uh, proposal about how that can be coupled by using uh, his, uh, the well sheet and then imposing some condition like hollowness and that kind of uh, condition. So, no matter what, uh, that's a complicated problem we don't know. Uh, but an anomaly exists, uh, I think we can, we can believe that, that assuming, uh, Sorry, yeah, yeah, on yeah. I mean, with the string on its own, yeah. there's no reason to say that it's not just uh, being new. And now yeah. you say the self-new coupling. You mean this being new coupling? Yeah, yeah. So, so that we know. Yeah. Now, no, I, I don't mean the string coupling. I mean the tensor multiplet. For okay, example, no, yeah, no, but yeah. String, yeah. Then still that. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I expect this coupling. I'm not saying there's no such coupling. Okay. No, I'm just saying, for example, like uh, usually we we couple uh, gauge field to the to the quantum field theory using covariant derivative, b mu plus a mu. Now with a b mu nu, then we see one proposal this morning. Uh, but otherwise, it's, uh, we don't know how to write down covariant derivative. For example, if we want to write down, we say, always say interacting theory of a uh, two comma zero. What, what does that mean? Yeah, I, want, I try to make it more, more uh, explicit. Then one way to think, okay, well, you turn to derivative to covariant derivative. Of course, it's, it's not so simple. I mean, but what I want to, what I want to say is that uh, just uh, uh, coupling the B menu to the two comma zero multiple is, uh, we don't know. Uh, maybe, uh, okay, maybe you're not, uh, maybe you see, see one more picture, you know what I want to say. I mean, in four dimensions, the wire anomaly come from picture like this. You have external gauge field and then matter running in the loop. In six dimensions, if we say we have wire anomaly, what, where does it come from? We expect to have some p mu nu here and then some matter running in the loop, but we need to know how they couple. But we don't, we don't have this kind of coupling. This is what I mean. Oh. Uh, but we can talk about more about that. Yeah, I, I don't know if I address your question. No, I, I'm yeah. Just, yeah. 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 So here, I, I'm not, I'm not assuming. I'm not committing to any specific framework to compute an anomaly. Just uh, this anomaly uh, is just the response of the partition function to a constant scaling. So it doesn't matter how you compute. Uh, there will be such a relation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so now we, uh, with the ADS uh, BCFT, we can similarly compute uh, this uh, uh, current. So uh, for a generic uh, edge, not necessarily self due, uh, then we can use ADS BCFT, and then we get we get this, and then uh, then we substitute substitute into this relation, then uh, then we find this for the anomaly. So it's straightforward uh, generalization of the F square term in four dimension. Uh, as I said, uh, usually in four dimension we expect, uh, we, we, we know this uh, anomaly come from the loop of the matter uh, coupled to external gauge field. But here we don't know. So I think it will be interesting uh, uh, in OE framework to see if uh, one can get something like this, for example. But first it, so, yeah. Yeah. That's just in gravitation. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's the thing, yeah. And, and what's wrong? Because, because you've done the path integral. Uh-huh. If I was to the path integral rather than the loop, mm -hmm. then I'd, you're saying it still ends up with that, but then yeah, this self-dual, why can't it just be self-dual? No, no, 
uh, so this is a uh, generic. So I'm not assuming self duality here. Yeah. No, no, but then I'm saying it is self duality. Yeah, self duality you will see next. Yeah, I was, I'm going to self duality next. Okay. Yeah, here is M5 brain. Oh. So, okay. Self duality is next. But uh, just let me put an in, interlude about uh, what, how may one uh, construct covariant derivative with a uh, beam unit. So uh, the natural object, uh, I've, uh, for the beam unit couple, I mean, beam unit couple to well sheet, of course, then it's, uh, it's natural to construct, uh, consider as uh, like a string field theory. So, uh, of string loop. For loop, then you have a, let's say this is a string function. Then the loop, you have a, you can deform the loop, for example, uh, the loop. So I deform C to delta C, then there will be little area created, which is delta mu nu. So one can take this uh, derivative, and if the derivative is well defined, then you have a, you have a, uh, well defined mean independent of the way yeah, you, 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 you choose a surface, that kind of thing. Uh, then, uh, then you have a loop derivative, which is, uh, symmet uh, anti symmetric in B mu nu, uh, in, in mu nu, because this is anti symmetric in mu nu. Uh, then we want a covariant derivative. So suppose you, uh, you transform your functional by some, uh, transformation like this, unitary transformation. So this is, a, in general, it's a functional, then I can have a pairing. So it would be determined in terms of some one form alpha. So this is, I claim this is general uh, unitary transformation for, for a string functional. Then, uh, then you can check easily that this uh, is a covariant derivative. Uh, this, uh, under this transformation, this uh, transform this with a face. Go ahead. No, I'm, I'm not, uh, yeah, this, uh, this two page actually has nothing to do with the rest of the talk. It's just, uh, if one try to, uh, yeah, yeah, this, this one, okay, okay. it's precisely, well, that's, that's the tracing distress tensor. Well, you said to constant scaling, what? metric, scaling of the metric, the yeah. The expectation value of the tracing distress tensor in the presence of, X a, a, of a background source, yeah. I don't, I don't have an example. Yeah, this will be the example. Yeah, this will be the first example. I mean, this X thing. Because X is a conformal in six dimensions. Uh, the B mu nu field. No, 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 no. It's not a theory with a B mu nu field. Just yeah. as, just as, it's a theory with a global one-form symmetry. Yeah. Because you're coupling the background. Uh, otherwise, I don't know what the formula in the box. Yeah, yeah, this is the, this is the one-form background. The B mu nu. Yeah. That's the a background field, right? So one form case symmetry, one form global symmetry, yeah. One form case symmetry. One form global symmetry, in the same way that a background gauge field couples the yeah. zero form global symmetry. Yeah. Right. So I want, so I know, I mean, because, you know, I, I, that's why I learned about my grandmother's thinking about, about field theories with global symmetry. I want zero form global symmetry, but she never called it that. Right? But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I mean, I, um, I just don't know anything about one form global symmetries. Yeah, it's of, no. You know, formal field theories in six dimensions. Uh, it's true, we don't know. An example in that, but, you know, all along. Yeah, I don't have example. So this would be like prediction. Okay, right. <laughs> fine. Yeah, I don't have. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's a. Uh, we, uh, we, unfortunately, in six dimensions, we don't, we, we don't have. I mean, all these have uh, become very abstract and formal, like JAP or. Or the use of this, uh, we don't, we need an example, I, I, I agree completely. But if it's just that 
Yeah. yeah. So it's, I've got usual gauge symmetry where alpha would be local. Is it not just the global part of alpha? Yeah. So then it is just. But this is a theory. But I mean, how to compute, use this. Uh, I, I'm not claiming this, uh, this current derivative is useful, but it's just a curiosity that one can construct all this. And in, if uh, there's a string field theory, then I think one can. If, if, if my global symmetry has the degree of symmetry of the current is conserved, yeah. then the dependence when I couple it to a background gauge field is gauge invariant, right? You don't rule manipulations of gamma. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? So, so the same thing is true here. If I have a, a, a theory with a one form global symmetry, then there's a, when I couple it to a background field, I guess I'm just saying, why isn't it the usual thing of the string coupled to a two form field where the global symmetry is exactly just the, the alpha is global? Mm -hmm. It's the usual thing where you've got, you used to that would be the case of the symmetry of the piece. I mean, that gives you the inertia charge. That, that is how you choose the inertia charge. Yeah, exactly. So it's just, so it's just the inertia yeah. charge. I can <laughs> No, but it coupled to the no, it coupled to the well sheet here. You still got, you still got, you still to the well sheet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, it's free within the multiplier itself, but it coupled to the yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what I'm saying is the the, the it's the string which coupled to to the tensor multiplet. It's not the tensor multiplet itself uh, coupled to each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it's, yeah. So it's just like QED, where Maxwell on its own is, is free, but then you couple to the charge particle. Well, but we don't know how to couple to the charge particle. Well, no, we, we, we know. This is the self due string. Yeah, yeah, you can say it's a classical coupling. Yeah. So then you get your nervous charge and you restrict it to the way it is. So the embedding is to the. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is so. So in principle, you have to generalize this to string field theory and. Okay. So uh, let's move on. So. Uh, so this is just a curiosity. I just uh, wrote down. Maybe this is useful for something. Yeah, but I haven't found any use of this uh, in 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 saying the in proving any properties of this yet. Yeah. Uh, but this would be, I think, would be the natural way uh, the anom wild anomaly could would appear. It's the effective action for the self due string. Yeah, which would have this uh, property. Um, so now come back to the M fibering system. Uh, the self due, uh, the B field is a uh, self due, so it doesn't make sense of X square. So, but on the other hand, we, we do have uh, some some uh, formulation of the self due uh, M fibering theory, uh, like the Perry Schwartz formulation. So let me just uh, go over it uh, very quickly. In that formulation, uh, one has to give up Lorentz uh, manifest a Lorentz symmetry, and the whole uh, tensor B mu nu is like a uh, Case tracing, we case track uh, this component, and then we, we represent the dynamics of the self due tensor case tree with a five by five, five, five uh, matrix. So, um, 
if I split the uh, six dimensional coordinate into x a and x five, uh, a space like coordinate, this is a Peri what Paris was did, and then this is the action, then uh, one, they, they show that this uh, action give uh, the self duality equation as a equation of motion. So, uh, well known thing. So, using this uh, variable, then I can, I can check that uh, this uh, uh, current anomaly relation I wrote down uh, can be solved with, uh, in terms of the Paris Schwartz variable. So, this is uh, the solution. So this is uh, our prediction, you okay, may say, uh, for the anomaly for M5 brain. Uh, so what's a P1 coefficient of P1? So we put back the unit and go back for M5, we know the dual is ADS4, uh, ADS7 cos S4. So we can plug back all the unit and then come uh, and find that it's N cubed. So this is the current. Uh, uh, the fact that it's N cubed suggests that uh, the theory degree of freedom of the theory does scale as n cube. It's not just the entropy, but, ah, uh, sorry. Yeah. Is that f six dimensions or is this string? Six dimensions, six dimensions, six dimensions, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, so long, so let me uh, summarize. So we, we found a new, sorry, sorry. yeah, yeah, sorry, no problem. If you, it's if good, you, yeah. So this is an anomaly, so it should be sensitive. So, so the good thing about anomalies is that it's actually sensitive to the one over n corrections in homology. Yeah, I know. I work so on those. Well. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, right. yeah. So it should be n times n squared minus one. N times n squared minus one. Okay. Right. Q1 minus. Yeah. So do you only see n cubed, or do you see n squared? <laughs> no, I, I, at the moment I don't see n cubed. Yeah, but to do that, I, I, I don't know. I have no idea. But n squared minus one, there. For example, in the Kyle anomaly, uh, Witten uh, did it come from Chen Simon correction? Because yeah, you can see yeah. in the in the five brain, you can get that from the uh, because through the anomaly cancellation, the yeah. anomaly has to form, yeah. and then so the, the, the inflow cancellation allowed you to get the n squared minus one. Okay, it would be interesting to. So I, yeah, I forgot about this story. Yeah, better, yeah, I forgot about this piece of story. Yeah, we, it's good. Thank you. So. Uh, yeah, it's maybe uh, get one over n square for rational in that case. No, yeah. Uh, so uh, we have found a new universal relation between uh, some boundary behavior like stress tensor or electric current uh, with uh, uh, for this uh, with anomaly. And in the presence of magnetic magnetic field, we predict a magnetization current in the in the vicinity of a boundary of QED vacuum. So this is uh, like a magnetic Kaisenmeier effect. Uh, we have completed uh, the proposal of uh, Tanakayaki for holographic PCFT. So now the proposal can work for any uh, shape of a boundary. And also we make a prediction about the wild anomaly for m fibering system. Um, so there are, there are a list of uh, questions, many questions one can ask. Uh, these are some questions I just put down uh, interest of interest to me. So for example, what's the origin of wild anomaly? Of course, this is uh, the most important question. Uh, we don't know. What's the implication of the partition function? Uh, it's interesting, but we don't know. Uh, quantum Hall effect can be understood in terms of non-computative geometry. Our induced current is very similar to quantum Hall effect. So can we understand the quantum, uh, our magnetization current in terms of non-computative geometry? That would be interesting. Uh, if, we do, we can, if we can do that, then we can prob probably understand also uh, what happened to the M5 ring wheel volume in the constant uh, C field background. So David has uh, worked on this for <laughs> from the beginning. So that will be very interesting if we can do this. So uh, let me stop here. Thank you. Yeah. Ah, how do I measure it? Ah, oh, you mean this one over x? Yeah. yeah, it's like the force. I mean, like Casimir force is one over x to something. So this is an idealized model. As long as you don't get too close, you don't see the molecular structure and that kind of thing, this is good. So there's a, there's a reddit, red, reg, reg, regime of reddity. So you cannot get too close to the boundary, then you can see this, this current. Otherwise, of course, it's divergent, yeah. So we estimate uh, to be, uh, depending on the lattice structure and the mass of, uh, I mean, the mass also of the charge of the electron, we also uh, 
change the behavior. I mean, we are, we are taking the conformal limit. So all this uh, will, will, will should enter in the model in a realistic uh, estimation. So uh, like I said, mere force, I mean, it's one of x to the power seven or something. Of course, it, uh, you have to do it up to some uh, limit. I mean the current, yeah, integrate. But the integration here is not integrated in this x direction. So I, I have talked to some experimentalists. They, they think uh, it's better not to think about the transport or current. It's, for them, it's easier to measure in terms of a response, some response function. So they think maybe we, we, we should generalize it to AC effect. There may be uh, some interference, then it's easier to see this curve effect. I don't know. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh. And can you just use that? No, no, basically, yeah. So basically it's a different thing because uh, uh, in solving this, in the case, in the generic case, B, you have a more independent component of B. I mean, in the self due case, uh, the B are related. So when you solve, given the current, you have to solve this, uh, then you just keep, it's not con continuous. I mean, the relation cannot, cannot be, it's not a limit of the other one, the solution. Uh, so does it mean that you're saying that this way doesn't really work? Oh. It works, but it's just uh, to solve, I mean, when you solve it, you have to take into account that uh, the, lump, the beam, for example, B12, uh, they, they are not completely independent. Yeah. Okay, so you have to that. Yeah, yeah, so the, it's not a simple restriction of this uh, formula. I can get to the other formula. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Okay. yeah, go, go ahead. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Good to see you. So the term customization was invented by Nikita, and Vasily gave me permission to use it. And it actually will be a second title of our paper. So um, 